Hey everyone, you've tuned into our Social Causes Fridays discussions. I am your host, the tour guide, Jenna Carasoa, for July 29th, 2022. At every point in time you're consuming this content, I can only hope you're doing well. And as always, thank you for tuning in with us and spending your valuable time. So, for our Social Causes Fridays discussions, I wanted to focus a little bit more on the spiritual aspect. We've talked a lot about controlled substances, uh, we've been studying the book, Forces of Habit, Drugs in the Making of the Modern World, we've talked about overdose, homelessness crisis, trying to educate young minds why it's best to say no to drugs, or at least if you're going to wait until you're much older and your body has a chance to, you know, grow and your body, your brain has the ability to cope with circumstances in life naturally without the use of chemicals or controlled substances. So with that being said though, we don't really talk about the spiritual aspect, so I opted to, you know, tell the rest of the story. It's one thing to tell kids, oh, say no to drugs, or just say no, just say no, without really giving them the deeper clinical explanation. So we can talk about the science and how our bodies are affected negatively. We can talk about the social standards and expectations. Um, talk about the morality, you know, it's a sin. Be very, very broad and generalized speaking. But there was one testimony that I heard recently about this young man, a Christian, and he had only spent years and years in the drug scene. He, you know, an atheist, no faith at all, had done pretty much every drug you can think of. Then he had an experience where he met the Lord, he became an evangelist, going out, really preaching the gospel, praying for people. And then he started to notice things where it's like some people weren't really, you know, receptive. They weren't experiencing the same type of miraculous change that he had experienced. So he was getting a little bit discouraged and um, he also had some seeds planted in his mind about potentially using um, psychedelic mushrooms and kind of dwelling or dabbling into the spiritual realm, being a Christian and wanting to engage in that environment. So he prayed about it for a couple of months and then for whatever reason, he found the opportunity to take it. He's like, okay, this is going to be my little exploration, my little journey to kind of understand both sides, where, where and why some people are still struggling in their faith and why they haven't come to the same point of his development. So he says early on, he made a statement that he's like, I can't overdose on this. You know, you can't overdose on shrooms. He had done it before, and he had taken a much smaller dose this time around. And he said that he heard the voice of God tell him, after he made that statement, that I can't die from these, him hearing God's voice saying, who says that I can't stop your heart right now? So after that moment, it felt as if he was allowed to be exposed to the evil of the world. He felt that there were these evil spirits, and he experienced himself um, the near-death experience where he was dying. He could not breathe. He couldn't catch his breath. He felt this pressure, this weight. The only time that he was able to feel any type of relief was when he was in prayer, like the immediate communication with God, the higher power. He experienced uh, an, or heard conversations about him. These dark evil forces were essentially telling him, like, or having a communication with the other side, saying, like, why does he keep coming over here and, like, dabbling, essentially, and... He felt as if they were fighting over him, and he was, again, pleading for his life. His wife's trying to help him. He doesn't understand. The only thing that he can muster is, like, you know, just pray for me. Just pray for me. I'm going through something. And he felt his body being, you know, torn between the earthly world and the spiritual realm. So I have to put a disclaimer out there as well. I have been, um, over the years, studying different religious doctrines or um, denominations, especially in the Christians. And a lot of them do not like to take too much account into the spiritual aspect. They don't like, or, you know, your personal testimony about the spiritual stuff. They believe that, hey, you know, it's between you and God. And it may or may not have happened. We're not going to take too much into account. If you experienced that, that's what you experienced. And not to rely too heavily on testimonies as a witness and to focus on Bible and God's word, just that and the other. So that's just one aspect of it. And there's other sites, they rely heavily on testimonies and they talk about and profess about the demonic influence and the dark forces of the world and the spiritual battle that we are constantly in. So with me being your tour guide, my objective here is just to present all 
aspects of this argument and put everything out there. Again, it's aimed towards specifically um, the younger generation, parents, and how to educate their children on the dangers of drugs and controlled substances or any of the pros and cons, because there's a lot of information out there and we don't entirely get all the full story or all the facts about certain drugs. So, I mean, there are particular faith groups there that they won't even drink caffeine, no, you know, no coffee, certain tea they won't touch, and for good reason, and I have a lot of respect and admiration for the, those who are spiritually disciplined in that regard to completely reject um, a lot of these chemicals and things that so many people are addicted to, whether it's just coffee or added refined white sugar. They, um, they have an effect on our bodies, and we can go down the laundry list and the pros and cons and the debates back and forth until we're blue in the face as to why you should or should not use particular controlled substances. So this is, again, just commentary, just opinion, just getting the information out there for you to make a decision and give you alternative ideas and reasons why it may be wise for certain people to say specifically and explicitly no, and another contributing tool that you can add to your collection of reasons why you should not do drugs, and these ones in particular. So this Christian man, he invited these the substance into his body. He allowed himself to be taken over essentially by these forces, and he's experiencing a moment where like he can see his own body being held up and like laying in the hand, the hand of God. And he's again in complete despair, pleading for his life, thinking about his family. I have to be there for my family, I gotta be there for my wife, children if he had any, I don't remember if he did or not. But he knew specifically that he wasn't ready to die and eventually it got to the point where he was uh, essentially in heaven, he claims, or he says, he shares and that he was with, he was in the presence of Jesus, that he couldn't see entirely everything. There was a veil, there were things that were limited to him. He saw some things, experienced some things, he was told some things he cannot put in human words or human understanding. He got to a point where he was just so overwhelmed by the, the information that he just told Jesus, like, hey, um, just take me back to the lower level and let me just worship you because I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to be in your goodness and to get all this information. He felt like just he couldn't take it. His fleshy body could not take it anymore. He was just so over to me. And in a powerful way that he just, again, can't put into words. He just felt like so humbled. He was like, let me just go to the bottom and worship you. So he was in a position where like all he could do was worship Jesus. So eventually, long story short, he ends up recovering. Um, he's physically sick, throwing up, getting all this stuff out of his system. And he didn't want to talk about it for a few days. He didn't even want to preach the gospel anymore. He just felt like I was at this point where like, I just made a terrible mistake and I don't deserve this. I don't deserve the life that I have. You know, God has so much mercy. And he also shares when he was in heaven, Jesus' response to him was like, you know, he wasn't like giving him dirty looks and like, well, you should know better. Like, you know, it was more like, hey, like maybe we shouldn't do that again next time. And he was very, very compassionate and forgiving. And so it's very, very powerful that we get these type of stories to hear different perspectives and if you are a very very spiritual person and you know about the dangers and the dark side and you've been delivered from demons and you've been delivered from witchcraft this definitely will probably resonate for you there's some people out there who haven't experienced anything at all they are completely ignorant to anything and this may be the first time hearing about the spiritual side of drugs and then there's people over there on the other side who um who are welcoming it, that's what they want, that's the objective. But we do have a lot of young people, like I said, who are completely ignorant to anything. They're tired of hearing the message, oh, just say no, just say no. There's lots of reasons, scientific, biological reasons why you should absolutely say no, or you should wait or stay until your body is fully mature, your brain is fully developed, your liver, all your organs, you have natural um, coping skills, coping mechanisms to handle life's hardships without any type of alteration or controlled substance use. So I'm always big on also encouraging nutritional supplements, um, getting fresher um, produce, a better diet that helps people oftentimes feel better where they won't have to opt for controlled substances so frequently. You know, if your body's feeling well, you oftentimes won't necessarily need to imbibe 
that's for a whole different discussion. Right now, let's talk about the spiritual aspect. So the gentleman, he had yeah, a near-death experience, taking psychedelic mushrooms, something that he had done already in his past and survived. He had a high tolerance, he could function, he had the mental clarity, you know, he clearly was equipped for whatever reason, his biological makeup, his spiritual gift, whatever, was pretty much to be um, psychologically prepared and immune to handle this. This isn't for everyone. Not everyone's going to have the same experience. Not everyone's going to have the same testimony. But it's very, very powerful and important to show you that, you know, I guess you could call him like a messenger. He went to that side, to the edge, and he came back to tell us, hey, there are certain things you shouldn't be dabbling in for whatever reason. So take this for what it's worth, which is just a lot of information. I'm throwing it out there. Um, always pray. Lord's Prayer. Sweet the blood of Christ turn to him, ask for his discernment, ask for his, you know, his wisdom as he leads and guides and directs you, pray for that. And um, thank God for a testimony like that where we can learn so much more about different parts of this complex world that we're living in. So, just wanted to share that with you, and as always, thank you for tuning in, you've been very, very valuable, and with that, I've been your host, the tour guide, Dennis Pearson. Take care and Godspeed.